fair enough. Exodus chapter 17. Well, everybody to put a Bible in front of them or get your phone out. And the key that I want you to read some scriptures from you. Just be ready to read. This message. We're glad to have Reverend Austin in the building. Good to see you. God bless you. Exodus chapter 17. Verse 10. This message is dear to my heart. And it's going to bless you. Because it's a blessing to me. And it ministered to me. And it's it's a relevant word for today's society. Exodus chapter 17, verse 10. When you have it, say amen. amen. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with, the, with, with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Yes. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. He was winning the war. And when he let his hands down, when he got tired, Amalek started winning. He prevailed. Don't y'all know the leaders get tired sometimes because people not doing what they're supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes your pastor get tired because people not doing what they're supposed to do and they're not where they're supposed to be. And you wonder why you're not winning the war. Please hear me, please hear me. Verse 12. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side, and the other, the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek, in other words, he defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. I want to talk about good results from operating in unity. Good results when you're operating in the spirit of unity. I need your undivided attention because Satan really don't want you to hear this. So whatever distraction is going to come, you know Satan going to try to distract you right now. So don't let the enemy distract you. There are in, in chapter 17 of Exodus, get this pig out of this book. Put your there are 16 verses in chapter 17 of the book of Exodus. All right, all right. And it was designed to talk about two different experiences that God's people had in the wilderness. When Moses was their leader, it's two stories. The first story is found in verses 1 through 7. And the second story is found in verses 8 through 16. Okay. One story is centered around the people wanting water. Okay. And that's the first story. It was centered around water. Okay. The people ran out of water and they complained to Pastor Moses. Yeah. And Moses got tired of the people murmuring and complaining. Yeah. So Moses smoked the rock and the people got water. The second story is found in verses 8 through 16. 
is centered around warfare. The first story is around water. Second story is centered around warfare. Amalek made war with Israel. Moses told Joshua to chase out those men. In other words, he told him, choose certain men that's going to fight Amalek and the Amalekites. Out of these two stories, I wanted to focus on warfare. Somebody said warfare. warfare. Because the modern day church and a modern day family is under attack. Please hear me. And what's hurting the modern day church, Sister Harris, and the modern day family is not water. But it's warfare. There's an attack on the church. And there's an attack on the family. And we are all not spiritual enough to see it. The devil is going to win if we don't remain spiritual. I didn't say religious. Because the religious people kill Jesus. Not the spiritual people. People barely come to church these days. Families barely spend time together. Families are so separated these days. And the church is so empty these days. The church is under attack. And only the spiritual people will see it. But if you're not spiritual, you don't know that you don't come to church. Because you're not spiritual enough to realize that. And look what's keeping you from church. The church is under attack against its morals and its standards. And some stuff is only spiritually discerned. And what's so sad is that many other people that are attacking the church are in the church. Church hurt is on the rise. Families are so separated because of what other family members are doing to each other. And today I want to talk about some good things that can come, that can happen when the, when people come together as a church family. Look at verse 10 of chapter 17. Keep your Bibles on. Don't shut up now. Verse 10. So Joshua did as Moses had said. There are four names in, in verse 10 that makes up this story. Joshua, Moses, Aaron, and Hur. Let's see how the four of them teamed up together in unity because that was significant and it led up to something great. When the church come together as a unit and unify itself and when your family come together in unity, yes. something going to happen great, y'all. Right. Yeah. When the Crips and Bloods come together, when the Hispanics and the Blacks come together, something significant can happen and it can be great if we come together in unity. So I'm going to say unity. unity. Joshua is a soldier for Moses. And later on, he become a spy for Moses. Because Moses told him to go spy the land. And he came back. He said, the grapes are so big. Because he spied for Moses. He was a soldier for Moses. He was a spy for Moses. And later, he became a servant to Moses. He was a soldier for Moses. He was a spy for Moses. He was a servant to Moses. And lastly, he is a successor to Moses. Should have got more eight hands on that because before you become a successor, I want to see how you can serve. Most people want to succeed you, but they don't want to serve. Notice I can get no eight hands because most people don't. They may not promote servitude. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to become great, you better you need to go get lower. If you want to become high, get lower. If you want more, give more. See, nobody likes to subtract, they like to add. And the way God adds to you while you subtract it. See, God math, mathematics are different from yours. You think if I don't give away nothing, I have more. But God said the way I add to you when you give away stuff. But y'all can't see that because you're not spiritual. See, some things are only spiritually discerned. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He told Joshua in verse 9. He said, Moses said to Joshua, choose out some men to fight with Amalek. And he said, you choose out some men to fight with Amalek. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on the hill. And I'm going to stand on the hill and watch with the rod of God in my hand. He said, I'm going to be on the hill holding the rod that God gave me. Y'all go down in the valley and fight. Now in verse 10, Joshua obeyed Moses. Now in verse 11, as long as Moses held up his hands, Israel was winning. When he let down his hand, they started losing the battle. Moses was holding that rod up and then he switched hands or held it up with both hands. Now that rod was given to Moses from God. And as long as Moses was using what God gave him for the people, the church was thriving. That's good, but when the people started complaining yeah. and not being obedient, Moses had to put down what God gave him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. To break up stuff at the church. Mm -hmm. And the enemy started winning the war. Yeah. Sister Akilah, get Exodus chapter 7. Verse 19 and 20. Read Exodus chapter 7, verses 19 and 20. The mic's on or, that, or is it off? We want to talk about what God gave Moses. Exodus chapter 7, verse 19 and 20. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and over the canyons, over the pods and over the receptors. And then I will turn it to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in vessels of wood and stone. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile, and all the water was changed into blood. The fish in the Nile died, and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. But the Egyptians' musicians did the same thing, but their secret arts in Pharaoh's heart became hard. They would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord said. Instead, he turned and went to his palace and did not take even to his heart. And now, I'm sorry right there. Now, notice nothing didn't happen until Moses did what God told him to do. Raise up the hand. Raise up the staff. Now, get Exodus chapter 8. Verse 5. It's going to be a pattern. Y'all stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to see the pattern here. Exodus chapter 8, verse 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff. Stretch out. It is. Lift it up. And the cannons and the pods, and make frogs come out of the land of Egypt. Woo. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up out and converted over the land. But the musicians did the same thing, but their secret arts. They also made frogs come up out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. Now read, read chapter, Exodus chapter 8. Just verse 16. Exodus chapter 8, verse 16. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground. And throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will become gnats. They did this. And when Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground, gnats came in the people of the animals. And the dust throughout the land of Egypt became gnats. Now get in Exodus chapter 9, verses 22. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that the hail will fall over Egypt, on the people and animals, and on everything growing in the fields of Egypt. And when Moses stretched out his staff toward the sky, the Lord sent a thunder of hail and lightning flashing down to the ground. So the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. Hail fell, lightning flashed back and forth, and it was the worst storm in all of the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. Notice it didn't happen till he stretched his hand out. Yeah. Read Exodus chapter 10, verse 12. Y'all see the pattern? When every time Moses stretches his hands out, stuff happens. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. It, it only happened when God told him to do it. Yeah. But when other people had done it, nothing didn't happen. Right. 
See, when God anoints you to do something, the anointing is the ability to get stuff done if God anointed you to do it. Everybody not anointed to do what God called you to do. Go ahead. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over Egypt so that the locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hell. So Moses stretched out his staff over Egypt, and the Lord made an east wind blow across the land of all the day and night. By morning, the wind had brought the locusts. They invaded all of Egypt and settled down in every area of the country in great numbers. Never before had there been such a plague of locusts, nor will there ever be again. They covered all the ground until it was black. Notice it didn't happen to the stretch forth his hands. In Exodus chapter 10, verses 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that darkness spreads over Egypt, darkness that can't be felt. Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and a total darkness covered all of Egypt for three days. Notice, stop right there. Notice, it nothing didn't happen until Moses' hands was up. And notice God can't use you until your hands are up in a surrender position. And you wonder why nothing can get done for you? Because you have to surrender. Come on. See you, can, see, you don't even like to put your hands up when the police say pull them up. Because you know you got wrong. See, stuff happened when Moses' hands are up. And notice he told Joshua to go fight. Why well, I keep my hands up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as his hands is up, God gonna look at Moses' hand and he gonna fight for Joshua. Yeah, yeah. Could I preach y'all? Thank you, sweetie. So whenever Moses held his hands up with that staff, he was saying, "God, we are dependent on you. Yeah. During this fight, we can't make it without you. During this fight, we need your help. We need your guidance." While Moses is up on the hill praying, Joshua was down in the valley fighting. Come on, come on. While y'all listening to me, please stay with me. Now in verse 11, as long as Moses' hands were up, they were winning. But when his hands were let down, they started losing. Somebody said, keep your leader hands up. Keep your leader hands up. Now in verse 12, Moses' hands got heavy. Sometimes you get tired. I'm trying to uphold the right thing. I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. Moses, in verse 12, y'all, if y'all ain't close your Bible up, Moses' hands got heavy enough work. He got tired. Because he got tired and he no longer could hold his hands up. He was like, Let me look at this story sideways. Man, when I look at this story sideways, Now, turn sideways. <laughs> Joshua was down in the valley fighting. Joshua was fighting a war and battling the Amalekites. Moses was on top of the hill praying. And Moses praying. Joshua was fighting, not Moses. But Moses got tired. How the hell you gonna get tired of praying? And I'm not here fighting, you got tired. So there's something wrong with this. But when you look at it sideways, Jesus. 
Stay with me, y'all. You would think Joshua would have got tired. He the one that was fighting. On breaking through his battle. Joshua the one needed help. But it wasn't Joshua. Why God? Somebody said, why God? Because Moses was doing something spiritual. Stay with me. Joshua was doing something physical. Because whenever in life, when you try to stay spiritual, the devil gonna try to weaken you. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. Because our weapons are not carnal. But they are mighty through God through the putting down of strongholds. Whenever you try to stay spiritual, whenever you try to fast, whenever you try to live right, start praying, start coming to church more, when you try to do the right thing, the devil will always try to come and weaken you. It ain't no secret, uh, uh, Kareem, when you try to do the right thing, because you, you say that I don't get mad, I get even. That's because you fight something physically. And you always want to get even. You shoot my cat, I kill your dog. You talk about my mama, I talk about your slew for the daddy. You talk about my kid, I talk about your ball headed kids. Your time I got your head even. I cut my baby hair, your baby hair won't grow. Don't you know you never get tired of doing that? You never get tired of busting the windows out of this car. You never get tired of snooping in this stuff. You never get tired of doing that kind of stuff. You never get tired of cussing somebody out. You never get tired of partying. You know, you know, ain't nobody say, you know what? I'm tired of partying. <laughs> I'm so tired of doing this. You ain't never hear nobody say that. But Bible said, y'all ain't like y'all tired. Too tired to come to church. But you ain't tired of partying. You know, you know what? I'm so tired of going to these Lego games. These are like these Lego games every week. I'm so tired of going to these gospel concerts. I'm just so tired. I'm so tired of smoking weed and drinking and I'm so tired of this stuff now. You know what? I'm so living right I'm so tired of drinking. I'm sick of drinking. I'm just so sick of drinking this heavy. I'm so sick of this weed. I'm so sick of this. I'm just tired of weed. You ain't gonna never say you're tired of that stuff. I'm so tired of rolling my eyes at that heifer. You know, you never get tired of that kind of stuff. Pastor, you ain't never hear me, but you know what I'm so sick? I'm so sick and tired of cussing these females out. I'm tired. I'm tired. I can cry. I'm tired. I'm just tired of crying, crying. You know, I'm just tired of, you know, people. <laughs> you get tired of being spiritual, but you don't get tired of getting evil. But as long as you take things into your own hands, physically, getting back at people, getting even, cussing back, Busting windows out of the car, shooting back. Thank you, God. Um. You don't speak to me, I don't speak to you. We keep it like that. They keep their distance. I love them from a distance. You love saying that. I just know them at a distance. You love saying that. It makes you feel justified. You don't know my family. I just keep my distance. That's easy to do. You don't want to say you saw me, so you keep your distance. Try to stay spiritual, the devil will try to weaken you. Yeah. And you got to have the right people around you when you get weak to be you back up preach stand. That's why you gotta have the right somebody with you. You need somebody say, you know what, forget that. Don't know. She, she didn't mean to step on your feet. Just go on, girl. No, no, don't get her. Forget that. Girl, don't do it. It ain't working. You got too much time. You got three kids at home. Why are you gonna do all that? Why are you doing all that? Why are you putting Vaseline on your face? You know, don't you know you got a son looking at mama come on? You putting on your Chuck Taylor and you putting on you get ready to go fight at the club. You need your home and say, let that alone. Let he wasn't even working, girl. He ain't no good anyway. What you, you need some homegirls like that in your corner. That part. Ain't gonna get too many amens on that come part. On. Result of 
here in unity, quickly. Three things, three things. Somebody say three things. Three things. The first thing that can happen as a result of operating assistance. Somebody say assistance. Assistance, assistance from others is a positive result of operating in unity. Verse 12, look how they was assisting each other. Yeah, yeah. Who told them to go get a stone? Nobody did. They were so close to their leader, they knew what their leader needed. Because they were so together in the spirit of unity until they knew just what their leader needed. Without asking. If you don't know what's needed, just ask sometime. And then they stood on each side and didn't nobody tell them you stand on that side. They just knew what they need, what the leader needed. They knew that when Moses' hands were up, they just knew they was winning down there. Yeah. So we ain't gonna ask Moses. We just gonna keep Moses' hands up. Right. Right. Notice they didn't help Joshua fight. They just kept help Moses keep his hands up yeah. because they knew when Moses kept his hands up, they saw winning. In other words, right. kept his hands in a praying position. As long as the pastor's praying, he's in a good position. As long as I gotta come on prayer, the Set an argument, nothing ain't gonna happen. Joshua has some assistance too. Why? Because he chews out certain people who get fighting him. You need some people that'll fight with good hearts. Joshua had people he selected to fight for him because everybody that's with you won't fight with you. You got to choose the right people to fight with you. If, if, I, if, if somebody tripping, it's two women that I know that I can take women that's going to get my back. I'm going to take Rhonda and I'm going to take your leg. Yeah. And Shamika. Yes. Kind of Shamika, she don't mind busting the cap. <laughs> and I got some fellas there will run. But I got a homegirl that will bust. And don't fool yourself. You're going to need somebody that's going to fight sometime with a good heart. You notice that Jesus said, get out. He didn't tell Peter to get out of here. He just said, not now. Some gangsters you need in your life. Because you need to be in that life to keep them humble. And you need them in that life. Sometimes you got to knock. No, I'm kidding. You know that, that Trump cousin that said, I'll go with you. He ain't doing nothing anyway. Put your pants up. We're going to go see what he did. Y'all try to act like gang now, man. Sometimes you got to check. Second thing that, that, that come out of unity is patience. Somebody say patience. Patience with other is a positive result of operating in the spirit of unity. They held his hands up. Look at verse, the end of verse 12. Look at the end of verse 12. Look, what the end of verse 12 say, y'all? How long they kept his hands up? Read somebody read the end of verse 12. All day till it got dark. Somebody say, that's patience. Yeah. Everybody ain't got patience with you. Everybody ain't got the patience with you. But when you operate the spirit of unity, people are going to be patient with you. When you learn how to drive, somebody had to be patient with you. Yeah. They held his hands up until the going down of the sun. What? And why do you need to be patient with other people? Because somebody was patient with you. Yeah. You haven't always had it together. You haven't always been in church. You haven't always done the right thing. You haven't always... You ain't always work together. You ain't always you, you ain't always not smoke weed. Somebody was there for you. You know you always have a sex problem. Somebody tell you to calm down too. So you need to be patient with other people because they ain't got it together like you got it now. Check your I know you like 90 now, but when you was 20, you got it going on too. So when you see a 20-year-old girl, don't cuss out. Say, I remember when I was 20. Have patience with the 20 year old. I know dress is short, but when you was 20, you had a short dress too. Just check the record. Somebody said, have patience with me, because when you was my age, you wore the same thing. That's why they like for you to see the old pictures. <laughs> as quick as other people. Some people don't know church protocol, but let them hang around the church long enough. They know what protocol is. Somebody said, take a little bit longer for other people. It took you a little God waiting for you until you stop smoking weed. Won't you be patient with somebody else who have a weed problem? Now Joshua is down in the valley fighting. He don't know what's going on on top of the hill. And you know why he don't know what's going on on top of the hill? Because he focused on fighting. And some people just focus on ushering. Just focus on being a deacon. Stop trying to be a preacher. Just focus on what God told you to do. I wonder what they're doing down in the last one. None of your business. What's beneath you? So I have no job. I ain't got no job either. Just stay in the valley. What God has assigned you to do, do it. And just
is watch him work things out. And lastly, deliverance came. So I said deliverance. Deliverance. You got hold on. Assistance. Patience. Now deliverance. I have my illustrations in the Deliver somebody deliver. Right. As a result of unity in verse 13, Joshua won the battle. Now, Moses didn't get credit for winning the battle. Joshua did. Joshua got credit for winning the battle. Why? Because he was focused on what God told him to do. You don't reach success all by yourself. Now in verse 14, verse 14, God finally speaks. Yeah. He speaks to Moses and said, write this down in a book right. so the people can know that everybody that tried to hinder you, everybody who tried to molest you, everybody that tried to take advantage of you, everybody that stole from you, everybody that left you for dead, the one that gave you those kids and he didn't take care of them, you know you're struggling, everybody that lied on you, everybody that know that you needed some money, they had the money to give it to you, but they watched you struggle, the Bible said God's going to deal with them. Yeah. Everybody know that you were sick and you couldn't do it on your own. They walked out your life at the point where you needed them the most. God said, I'm going to deal with them. Everybody that tried to stop you from getting what God wanted you to be, God would deal with them. And maybe God can't deal with them because you're still busy trying to deal Come with them. Out. You need to let them go so God can deal with them. Better talk about if it. He acting a fool, let God deal with them. He going to run back to you. Someone said, just step back and let God fight your battle. Yeah. God knows where your enemy is. God knows where your enemy are. And God knows who your enemy is. And you can, God knows what your enemy needs. Come on. Stop doing tit for tat. That ain't going to get you nowhere. He said, write it down because God knows Joshua is going to be the next leader. And he wants Joshua to know, same God back then. Thank God right now. If he did it before, he can do it again. I know he will. Yay! Look at your never say, I know that's right. I know that's right. In verse 15, Moses built an altar. He built an altar. Sister Hannah, whenever you build an altar, 